I keep talking about Fred Shibesta on this channel, the self-proclaimed crypto king of Australia who lives in his self-described crypto castle. Fred, you may remember, sold his over-the-counter trading desk Hivex to Alameda Research, who then made Sam Bankman free director of it and used it to bank FTX. Fred is also the co-founder of Finder, an application which lets you compare different financial services, which is currently being sued by Australian regulators for their earned product, which let people earn yield on crypto. Fred stepped down as CEO of Finder a couple days before they ended up getting sued. But none of that is why we're here today. No. You see, I realize that he thinks he's a crypto TikToker. A cryptoker. He has about 100,000 followers, and they are bad. They're really bad. He also has some bad videos on his YouTube channel. So we're going to talk about some of the bad things that Fred Shabest has done. You know, besides letting his business be used to bank a fraud, that's a separate thing. How was he supposed to know? You know, that's what everyone says. Okay. Remember that how I mentioned that Finder Earn product they're getting sued for? Well, he still has a YouTube short up promoting it. Yeah, that's their jingle. Okay, that's enough of that. Uh, my favorite part of this is that while he's sleeping, it's going up by pennies. And not even like real pennies. They're Australian pennies, which are worth less than real pennies. Now, that's not the only Finder-related video he still has up on his YouTube. He has another one where he promotes Finder's fee-free crypto trading. It has got no fees on its crypto trading. Zero. Fee-free. Fee-fee-fee-fee-fee-fee-fee. No fees. Zing, zing. Be free, 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 on your crypto trading. You know what's interesting? Finder never disclosed who they partnered with for their fee-free crypto trading and their Finder earned product. I mean, we know who he sold his over-the-counter trading desk to, but don't know who they used for that. Hey, it could be. We don't know. A day before it was reported that he had stepped down as CEO of Finder, he posted this one on YouTube. This is after he sold his crypto trading desk and presumably the same day or the day before he stepped down as CEO of his other crypto company. So didn't he leave the crypto boat? I'm just saying. I mean, he also even rents out his crypto castle. Just saying. Just saying. I'm not sure he's on the crypto boat. Now, a few days after he stepped down as CEO, he posted this next video with the caption, we're just getting started, which is interesting because, you know, he sold his desk, he stepped down as CEO, and then they got sued, but they're just getting started, you know? What a fun work happy hour for them that they're all just getting started. It's it's exciting for this former CEO who showed up at this. Now, I know I just kind of implied that they were partnered with FTX, but we don't actually know that. But we what we do know is that Fred had a whole bunch of fun at Binance Dubai. And we're here at the Binance party. Sitting in the sand in Dubai. Sitting in the sand in Dubai. Okay, he also posted a second video when they were leaving Binance Dubai. I do not have time for this. I do not have time for you. Apparently he doesn't have time for the car. I, I don't know why the car is taking up so much of his time. Maybe he doesn't understand the words he's saying and this is his idea of flexing? You know what? Some mysteries we may never get to the heart of. Okay, let's focus up for a minute and get some advice from a crypto king. We're in a pretty nasty bear market right now. 
So let's see what advice he has for a bear market. Here's three things to do in a bear market. Tip number one, build. Whatever you build right now is going to fly high in the bull market. Whatever you build, okay? Doesn't matter what it is. You can build a Ponzi scheme. You can build a foot gun. You can build anything. Next bull market, it is going to go up. That's tip number one from our crypto king. Tip number two, be patient. Now is the best time to buy little amounts because in the bull market, those investments are going to fly high. Okay, so tip number two, build in the bear market is tip one. Tip number two is buy little amounts because no matter what you buy, it's going to go up in the bull market. Yeah, okay, we're nailing this. Crypto King advice is really going to help us get through this bear market, y'all. Tip number three, and if it really goes low, I want to sell my penthouse and buy a lot of Bitcoin. Okay, so tip number three is if after you've been building and after you've been buying small amounts, it goes even lower. That's when you, person at home suffering in the spare market, you sell your penthouse and you buy a whole bunch of Bitcoin. Got it? Just sell your penthouse. For more tips like this, follow me on TikTok. Yeah. The fart noise. Get it a fart noise sound effect. Tick. When he told people to follow him on TikTok. Tick. After telling them to sell their penthouse to buy Bitcoin. Oh. <sighs> Why am I doing this? I can stop. No one knows about the existence of this video yet. I can keep it that way. It only has a few hundred views on YouTube. No one needs to see this. Oh. Also, I do believe he was at his crypto castle for those three tips. And sometimes at his castle, he shows us he will hit golf balls. I sit by my He's going to a meeting, but then he slips. And then he stops slipping and he hits the golf ball towards the coral reefs. It's biodegradable though, he said it in the caption. That's what crypto kings do in their crypto castles. You wouldn't get it if you don't have a penthouse. Or, you know, if you had a penthouse, but then you sold it to buy Bitcoin, you would still get it. Because at one point you had a penthouse. And that's the important feature. I got us off topic again. Let's get back on topic. Crypto advice from a crypto king. Fred Shabesta's got us, I'm sure. This next clip, it looks like it's going to tell us what it feels like when you bought Bitcoin in a dip. Okay, so let's let's see what happens. Okay, so when you buy Bitcoin in a dip, you feel like a dancing baby in a pool. That's good to know. There's another video where he tells us what happens when you didn't buy the dip, which is going to be different. That is an unpleasant face you have to make when you forget to buy Bitcoin during the dip. So yeah, if you don't buy Bitcoin during the dip, you have to make that face and do that little dance and then stand back up. If you do buy it though, then you're a baby floating in a pool. I think I got that right. Okay, sorry. We've got the crypto king of Australia here. We need his advice on cryptocurrency. I'm a crypto critic. What do I know, right? I'm not in the trenches like he is. I don't know the kind of things that he knows. So let's hear what he has to say about XRP. You might ripple XRP. Firstly, what is it? XRP is a coin and a blockchain. Okay. XRP is a coin and a blockchain. Sure. Built by Ripple Labs, it's intended to be used for international payments. Okay. XRP's ledger is meant to be used for international payments, kind of. XRP itself, like the pitch they sold it on, was that it was going to be the ultimate source of liquidity in the various Forex transactions occurring as part of those international payments. The price of XRP's been bumping! Is Bitcoin and Ethereum have been leaping. 
Rupert Labs is in a court case with the SEC. Now, we don't know the result of the court case, but XRP is pumped up 10%. We don't know, but it's pumped up, so... Now, this coin is a giant coin. It's about the sixth biggest on the coin market cap, and we're going to find out which way this court case is going to go. We're going to find out some year soon. Oh, and the price is going to go with it too. It's funny how he keeps saying he doesn't know and then like exclusively pointing up. XRP is an OG. It started back in 2012. It is centralized, unlike Bitcoin, which is decentralized. That is just a brilliant analysis of the differences in centralization between those two coins delivered in that sentence. Uh, the transactions are super quick. Would you buy XRP? Comment your thoughts below. And if not, tell us which coin you're buying. Yeah, tell us which coins we're buying so we can earn the yield for our earned product. Oh man, this guy ran up. This guy ran a fucking over the counter trading desk. He ran a cryptocurrency payment service. He owned like 10% of an Australian bank at one point. Maybe a little bit less than that, but he owned a big stake in Goldfield's money. Can you be around that many things and like not pick up any knowledge? Like not even by osmosis or anything, just... <sighs> no one's seen the video. It still ended. Okay, so the guy who wears the buy Bitcoin jacket doesn't have a great handle on XRP. But I'm sure he understands Bitcoin market dynamics then. So, right, he, he has this person coming over to his crypto castle and asking him a question about Bitcoin. So let's hear it. You know, let's let's see what kind of content we're getting on the crypto king of Australia's TikTok. What would happen if someone bought the rest of the Bitcoin out there? What would happen if someone just bought all the rest of the Bitcoin? Just they went out, they bought all of them. What would happen? Fun hypothetical. Um, that's not how really markets work, but fun hypothetical, right? Like literally launching a Bitcoin literally. rocket. Why? Because there's no supply. When there's no supply, prices just No supply, up. prices just on the Bitcoin rocket. Okay, so Bitcoin market dynamics, little hit or miss in his content. I mean... He's not wrong that things would be weird if someone was buying literally every single Bitcoin. Not a situation that could occur, but fun hypothetical, I guess. Okay, he's been running a financial comparison website for like a decade now, I think. Maybe he's got a better grasp on the traditional finance markets. Let's hear, why do stocks go down from Fred Shibesta? stocks go down thanks for your question ben richardson 01 stock prices change based on buyers and sellers but the more people who are buying stock prices go up but if there are more people who are selling stock prices go down no no the numerical number of buyers and sellers doesn't really matter maybe the size of their orders matter if you want to like kind of look at the liquidity but like the price of an asset is just the last price paid for it, the last price someone was willing to pay. Stock prices go down because that's the price that people are currently willing to pay for that asset. But what brings in these sellers? Well, when key staff leave, forecasts don't work out, or if there are negative announcements, that tends to bring in a lot of sellers. Yes, when bad things happen to companies, people are less willing to pay the current price for it because bad things are happening. You can see news, announcements, and analysis in trading apps like Moomoo. Moo. Usually stocks react to these kind of factors, so it's really important that you have these kind of data feeds on your trading platform. Check that out. It's something like 99% of day traders lose money, especially when compared to benchmarks. Don't do it unless you have some really strong reason to believe you're going to be good at it. That's not financial advice, of course. It's statistical advice. I'm recommending you consider how exceptional you are. Stocks react to a lot of different factors in a lot of different ways that aren't really necessarily predictable. You'll see companies surge on earnings misses because the miss is smaller than some analysts predicted, for example, right? There's a bit of chaos in the markets that makes them somewhat 
unpredictable, even if you expect eventually it's going to reach whatever you think a fair value is. It's not just more sellers than buyers, though. Okay, okay. So Fred's got some weird investing advice, weird cryptocurrency analysis, a strange understanding of how these markets function. But before crypto, he was an award-winning internet marketer. And if there's one thing internet marketers seem to love, it's NFTs. So we're going to look at some of his NFT stuff and see if maybe that's better. When your NFT dragon needs dragon eggs. I mean, I guess if your NFT dragon needs the eggs, you have to buy them. What's your other choice? Let the token die? It's a token. It's got a soul. Can't just let it die. Luckily. This time, when he bought the desperately needed eggs, they went up. And now the Crypto King is richer, and you can be too, but probably not. When your dragon, when your NFT dragon needs eggs. How am I supposed to even make a joke about when your NFT dragon needs eggs? That's the kind of thing I would write as satire. That's just a thing that's in Fred's life. Hopefully he knows a modest proposal was satire. Okay, <clears throat> this video is a mess. <laughs> Listen, so you may be thinking Fred is bad at a lot of these things, but maybe he's a great boss. Though, there is this one interview he did on Sky News and features on his YouTube channel where he says that he won't tell people he's interviewing the address of the place they're being interviewed. A small example, uh, you know, and, and, and for entrepreneurs out there, what I do is I set up a lot of tests. I set up a lot of tests. Just feels like a red flag already. So one of, the, one of the ones I always talk about is I never give the address of where the interview is. Okay. So if you're having an interview with me, you'll never know. His point is that you can Google the finder addresses and surely that's where you're being interviewed, right? There's no chance it's anywhere else. Why would you even ask? If you do ask, you failed his test. Gotta be a great boss. So, what do we got left? What could Fred still be good at? He relatively recently get, shared his opinion on crypto regulation with the Australian government. Let's hear what he has to say here. We should guarantee any crypto deposits that are held in custody up to a certain amount within Australia. So this would be like you deposit your assets into FTX Australia and the government insures them against the risk of FTX Australia defaulting. That is what a leader would do. That would, that would drive a huge influx of deposits of cryptocurrency into Australia. And think about how great that would have been for Australia. And from that, what would happen is you would get, even if it's small, $1,000 to start with, whatever it may be. But that small amount would create a huge funds under management for Australia. Because this is how you think about countries. If they have a bunch of cryptocurrency deposits at an exchange, that's part of that country's funds under management. And holding those funds, you can redeposit them and redeploy them back into the cryptocurrency market and make yield. So just to be clear, he's now recommending that the Australian government insure the deposits and let the cryptocurrency exchanges lend them out and rehypothecate them in order to earn yield well, they are insured by the Australian government. And that yield will be, drive huge amounts of taxes, huge amounts of jobs. And that yield will drive huge am amounts of taxes because how could it not, right? And huge amounts of jobs because if there's one thing that drives jobs, it's cryptocurrency lending. That's why it's the basis of my 2024 platform. Cryptocurrency lending. And, and it's never been done. You know, it's, it's a big step forward. Never been done is true. It's a bold step. And obviously, anyone who's holding this, so custodying these assets, it needs to be under a certain criteria. Just like with getting a banking license in Australia, there needs to be checks and security and ensuring that there's certain ways in which those, those are stored. It doesn't matter how they're stored once you're lending them out and rehypothecating them, Fred. It would be an incredible future where Australia would be the crypto bank of the world. So why am I talking about this stunning indictment of the Australian cryptocurrency industry? Well, for one, his links to SBF, with him selling the desk that allowed FTX access to banking. Because he went out and purchased a meaningful stake in Goldfield's money, which FTX ended up using, which I find fascinating. 
because he won't say who Finder was partnered with for their earned product or their fee-free trading. That's all weird. Oh, also, he has 100,000 followers on TikTok, and like most people with nothing to say on TikTok, he's selling a course. In this course, there are six steps. We're gonna try and short circuit all those fears. Okay, so step one is mindset. Immersion and understanding information is really important. And it really can challenge you, drive you, and push you. Early majority is where the big money's at. I'm gonna share with you some of the techniques along the way that I use. You're gonna say yes. This will create growth. You're going to say yes. This is going to create growth. I guess we only get step one is mindset here. The other five steps you gotta pay for. I don't think I'm gonna do that. Interesting fact, he uses the entity Shabesta Ventures to sell these courses, which you would think would be owned by Fred Shabesta. But actually the ultimate owner of it is Finder. It even used to be called Finder Marketplace. He clearly still has some connections to Finder despite stepping down as CEO. But if you tried to ask him what job he did even before he stepped down, well, he couldn't really tell you that. Thanks very much for your question, Itzy. What's a question that makes you feel uncomfortable well, uh, what do you do for work? Oh, boy. I guess now that you sold Hyvex and have stepped down at Finder, nothing. Nothing is what you do. Or, I guess you make bad TikToks and try to sell your course. Fred is the classic crypto marketer styling themselves as an expert and bumbling into early success before becoming embroiled in regulatory battles. Hopefully, I'll be able to talk about him less now. If you want to understand how he was connected to FTX, make sure to check out this video. And if you want to check out his crypto castle, then check out this video. Tip